Hello, hello. Good evening. Hi, good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Really nice to be here with you guys. Hello, hello. Good evening. Welcome. So glad to have a Blanquita, Ember, Carlos, Luis, and Maria Elena. So welcome. So you are. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Really nice to have you here, guys. Okay, then. So let's see. First things first. I know we are still uh, just starting. We're still just a few people right now, but we're going to take the attendance for the first time. So before I forget, here we go. Let me see. Okay. So here we go with the first attendance of the night. Let's see. Here. All right, so we start then with Ana Beatriz Campos de Guzman. Not here. Por ahí me pidió permiso, que le pusieron la vacuna, so not going to be here today. Eh, Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present teacher. All right, thank you very much, Blanquita. Nice. Then we have Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. All right, thank you, Charlie. Very good. Nice. Uh, then we have Carlos Javier Crespin. Carlos Javier, not here yet, okay. Then we have Christian Ernesto Lazo. Not here yet, all right. So then we continue with Denise Grisel Brizuela. Denise Grisel, not here yet. So we continue with Ember Giovanni Polio. All right, Ember is, is driving. Okay, nice, Ember. Very good. Yeah, well, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you, Ember. So let's see, nice. Then we have Francisca Elizabeth Martinez. Not here yet. So we have Jose Eduardo Guzman Alvarez. Jose Eduardo, not here yet. Then we have Juan Carlos Rivas Jovel. Juan Carlos, not here. All right. Uh, then we continue with Karen uh, Vanessa Morataya. Not here yet. So we continue with Luis Alfonso Martinez. Present teacher. All right, thank you. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, nice, Luis. Nice that you're here. Excellent. Then we have Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate. I'm here, teacher. Excellent. Thank you very much, Maria Elena. Glad you're here too. Uh, we have Nelson Gavarrete Merino. Nelson Gavarrete, not here. All right, not here. So we continue with Omar Francisco Hernandez. Omar, también me pidió permiso por ahí. Teacher, good evening, Christian Lazo. Hi, hey, Christian, welcome. Christian Hernandez present. Lazo, present. Entonces, very good. Gracias, Christian. So nice. So we continue with. Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Hello, person. All right, thank you very much and welcome, Oscar. And uh, finally, we have Jenny Suleima Santos. Jenny, Jenny, not here, not yet. All right, so that's it then. Okay, so that's pretty much it, good. All right, so we're going to start then with today's class. Um, we have quite some material for today. We are going to have like a couple of um, activities that we're going to be developing. Um, and we're going to start with a new topic. Before we start with this new topic uh, that I have for you today, I want to show you this video. Many people say, 
if pronunciation or if the right pronunciation is really, really important whenever we are speaking. And they say, what's more important, teacher, pronunciation or transmitting the idea? So both are important, but I want you to pay attention to this video in which we're going to watch if some, well, we're going to listen and watch some people using different accents. Um, if you notice, we, when we speak Spanish, uh, we have different accents too, right? We have an accent here in El Salvador, uh, which some people say it's a neutral accent. Some people in Mexico, they speak in a different way. In Guatemala, they speak in a different way. Um, Argentina, they're going to use a different accent. In Spain, et cetera, et cetera. So there are some variations of the same language, which is Spanish. The same happens with English. Well, even here in El Salvador, a person from San Miguel, for example, uh, some people say they speak different um, from people who are more in the Western part of the country. So I want to show you this video. You listen and try to uh, understand the ideas that they are going to produce. And you let me know which one, in your own opinion, is the most difficult accent for you, right? So we're going to see. Let me see. Ta -da, ta -da. All right, so we're going to watch right now accents from all the states in the United States. So here we go. I'll, I'll enable subtitles so that you can get an idea. Subtitles are not 100% accurate, but so that you can have an idea. So ready? Listen, here we go. Accent, but everyone else told me I did, so I never really understood my accent. But we say soda pop, and that was weird, I guess. The great thing about Oklahoma is it's really this confluence of a whole bunch of different parts of the country. So the, the northern part of the state is really like the plains, so people kind of have that flat Iowa accent. People always know I'm from the Midwest when I say bagel. But if you get down south to the Little Dixie portion, it has a much more of a southern drawl. Elongating those vowels a little bit. And saying y'all every sentence. How y'all doing today? Y'all want to go to Waffle House? Come on over, we'll go to Waffle House. It's just like real round in your mouth, and you're just like, hey y'all, how we doing tonight? Um, are you guys going to go down to the game this weekend? I'm so excited. Like Joshua's doing real great this year. Everybody talks really slow, especially compared to New Yorkers. Most New Yorkers are loud. You got to fit your way into a conversation most often times when you're in New York. Vermont's accent is uh, very unique and it's hard to slip into unless you're talking to another person who like grew up farming. But the phrase that I can say in my accent is always, oh sure bud, oh sure. People from California kind of have like, they say like. Colorado doesn't really have a typical accent. Lots of people say that it has no accent, but you'll definitely get called out if you say Colorado, it's Colorado. So I've been told from people in New York that my state has an accent. Some people go Chicago. I don't think we do. There's parts that I can hear like a little bit of a twang and kind of sound like this. Some people in New Mexico have accents, depending on what part of the state you're from. People in the South tend to sound a little bit more like they could be from Texas. Really wide syllables, really kind of drawn out phrases. It's a little sing-songy, like a little bit valley girl almost. I'm from New Mexico and I love eating burritos. You wanna go skiing up on mountain? Pass me those taters. <laughs> I don't know, I mean like there's cowboys, you know, there's horses. I don't know, because I don't feel like I have an accent. I went home a couple of years ago and was watching home videos of my sister and I, and we had to like do a weather forecast as like little kids, and we'd be like, there's a big hurricane coming from the, the left coast, but don't worry because we don't know that it's coming. And people would be like, what are you saying? I can put on the, you gotta park the car and hop the yard and give the guy a quarter for some chowder. That's a standard Boston accent right there. Any ER would have an AH at the end. It's kind of like, Boston, but cooler, and 
getting a bit more drunk. Like, we gotta go up to Baja, but I get some lobster supper. My mom has this kind of strange, half French Canadian, half Boston accent that sounds like peanut characters. Womp womp. Oh, if you're from North Dakota, you've got some long O's. Oh yeah, you betcha. Yeah, hang on to your R's a little too. It gets a little bit thicker the older you are. Your grandma sounds a little bit like this. Your mom might be a little bit softer. I'm from Wisconsin. Go pack, go. It kind of gets like up here. Go pack. I say bag. I have some eggs and a big. The best example of the Wyoming accent I feel like I've ever seen was in Brokeback Mountain. One curve in the road and they missed it. So if you live in Washington state, no one ever says they have an accent. They all think they speak pretty normal, which is kind of true. Just kind of middle of the road, sort of like Delaware itself. But they also kind of have like a country hit kind of thing to them. So they'll say like, Washington, like I'm gonna wash my hands. And you're like, wash? What kind of a word is that? We pronounce our T's as D, so we say like Connecticut instead of Connecticut. I feel like Michigan's typical accent um, is very nasally. Hi, like that type of vibe. So if I'm from like Northside Kauai, I'm going to sound something like this. People say that us Marylanders have accents, but I don't think we have an accent. Idaho doesn't have a really distinct accent. There's no accent in Indiana. This might be very biased, but I don't think we, I really don't think we have an accent. I don't hear it but I get reminded of it when I travel. I mean, I, I think this is normal. It's a perfect neutral Pacific Northwest tone. Sarah Palin does not have a typical Alaska accent. She's not really from there. She grew up in, I don't know, Kansas or something. My husband laughs at me because I say wolf instead of wolf. Our accents are all over the place. The first one that comes to my head is a Latino one. Me voy a coger un cortadito. <laughs> There's the St. Louis accent where we say certain things like, Waters and water. Where I'm from, they like to say Haina or Mayan. That shirt over there is Mayan. From Philly, they like to say Wooder and use guys. But in Pittsburgh, instead of use guys, they say Yins. What are Yins doing? North Carolina is, is it's, it's an interesting accent. It's just got a little bit of a drawl. It's a little lazier. Just very slow pace, very good, very nice. There's Tross in South Carolina, which is more like this. It's more smooth. It might have a daughter named Darcy. And then you got the real squealy, squealy Southern accent. And then you just got the very just, hey, how you doing? God bless. You have a good day now. Okay. There you go. No Netflix, no. All right. So what about this video? Which one do you think was the most difficult accent from all of them? In your own opinion. Any ideas? If not, I'll pick someone here. Let's see. Um, dum, dum, dum. E, Juan Carlos, which one was the most difficult for you to understand? Nasal. Uh, nasal sounds. Like, yes. hi, right. <laughs> okay, there you go. Good. So let me see. Elizabeth, are you there? Elizabeth? Yes, teacher. Oh, there you I are. Think... All right, yes, Elizabeth. Acabo de llegar. Oh, <laughs> teacher, I no see, le puse. O sea, sí le puse atención, pero no, no sí vi puso, porque... Sí le puse, pero no le puso. <laughs> sí le puse atención, pero no entendí nada. Ah, uh, ok. <laughs> so all the accents were difficult. <laughs> Para mí, all. <laughs> all right. Er, so, uh -huh. Everybody, I don't understand. You didn't catch any word from anybody of these guys. Okay, don't worry. I'm going to explain something about that. So nice. Let's see, Carlos, what about you? Any particular difficult accent for you? Yes. Uh -huh. Carlos? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, all of I, I hear water and water. <laughs> Water, water, uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right. So, was it difficult to understand in general? 
Yes, a little bit. Indeed, right? This is like e how real English is spoken, right? This is how people speak. If this is what I like, this is what I like to call real English, right? So it's uh, something that it's not in the book, something that sometimes we cannot teach. It's something that we gotta learn, that we had us, we get experience, right? And that happens through uh, interaction, right? Interaction with people, interaction with the culture, et cetera, et cetera. Is it something that we can get? Yes, we could, right? We could at least get really close to it. Now, all this, uh, I brought it to your attention because I know some people, they are really concerned about pronunciation and about speaking fast, right? Uh, many people want to speak fast as soon as they can. And as you could see, había personas que hablaban despacio, había personas que hablaban rápido, y, y todos eran native speakers, ¿verdad? Y todos eran nacidos allá, todos hablaban inglés norteamericano, cada quien con su acento, dependiendo de su estado, pero y, si se fijan, a algunos se les entendía bastante claro, o relativamente claro, y a otros era como de, ¿qué? Massachusetts, Uh -huh. Yeah, that was fast. For example, to me, in my opinion, Massachusetts is the most difficult one because the lady was like, ta, 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 and I was, what is like, what? What is she trying to say? Right? So we don't get the idea. And that's uh, at a certain point normal, right? Es normal. Y cuando estamos comenzando a aprender inglés, sentirnos así. Y, y si bien es importante pronunciar bien las palabras en inglés y um, hay un balance ¿no? entre la buena pronunciación y la fluidez right? y um, no te, fluidez no es correr, no es hablar como metralleta como creo que les recordaba un día y este, tampoco hay un acento eh, digamos único, ¿no? Mucha gente se avergüenza cuando logra aprender inglés de su, de su acento, porque tiene un acento que lo delata que son latinos, mexicanos, eh, argentinos, españoles. Cada quien aprende el inglés con su, y le pone un poquito de su acento, cuesta despegarnos de ese acento. Pero, hey, es parte a veces también de nuestra cultura, ¿no? Y siempre y cuando nosotros podamos transmitir el mensaje, la idea que nosotros queremos transmitir, ahí vamos, ¿no? That's one of the most important things. So, don't feel bad if you think your pronunciation is not so good yet. Don't worry. It will come with time and effort, right? And at some point, you'll see that you will also develop fluency. My recommendation is, as always, listen to someone or to material that is like this, real things, like mm, not just conversations like um, from the book or not just things. We are sometimes really accustomed to um, things that are from the book, like unit one, track number two, listen and practice. And then the conversation is kind of, I don't know, slow, right? Hello, Maria, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. What about you, Mario? Jesus, the thing is that when we have to talk to a real person, eh, people speak really fast, right? They're gonna say, hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing today? How you feeling? What did you do yesterday? They're gonna eh, throw at you eh, questions at a really fast pace, and they are expecting you to understand. Y there is something that I always say. Nos acostumbramos al, al, al típico, por ejemplo, eh, how are you today? Y siempre decimos, fine, thank you. And you, right? Ya lo tenemos aquí grabado, ya listo, solo de, de tirarlo. El fine, thank you, and you. Y tal vez enfermo, ¿verdad? tal vez con una gran gripe, o no sé. Pero decimos, fine, thank you, and you. So, 
it doesn't work like that. Uh, there are so many things that we can use. Uh, I know that that's really stuck in our mind, but still uh, we can learn different expressions, real expressions, right? So never stop uh, looking for new material like this. So very good. All right, so just a little reflection for you. And now let's get down to business. Today, we're going to start uh, this topic, which is related to a very uh, useful expression that is the use of the verb to be, uh, well, the use of there plus the, plus the verb to be, right? So that can be there is or there are in Christian. But let me see. I want to show you before we jump into that, I want to have a little review with you about some basic concepts. Uh, I'm sure that probably uh, you have seen this before. So let me see. Teacher, y ya habían pasado la lista. Uh, yes, yeah, but don't worry. Uh, at nine, I'll do it again. So I'll check your name in the second one. All right, so don't worry. Present, teacher, cuando la vuelva a pasar. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Usted tranquila, yo nervioso. <laughs> nice, there you go. Okay, then. So let me share with you my screen so that we can see it and so that we can have this little review on countable and uncountable nouns. Do you remember countable and uncountable nouns? Something about that? Yes. 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 Easy, right? So let's see. Let's give it a try. We're going to play this Kahoot as we did the other day. Eh, hoy no van a tener que ordenar toda la oración, no. Solo tienen que seleccionar la correcta. So, bueno, no nos haremos bolas. So, here we go. You just need to go to www.kahoot.it. And then you enter this pin number that you're seeing here. And after that, you also type your name. So let's see. Música de casi viernes. Uy, it didn't change it. Uh, all right, turn off the music. Jesus. All right, there we go. So we have Carlos, nice. Very good. All right, Acribas. <laughs> all right. El corrector me escribió mal, teacher. El foto hacia arriba. Yo dije, ah, caray, eso no es maluco. Ok, so es JC, ok, nice. JC, JC Rivas. All right, let's wait for the rest. There we have Luis, very good. Oscar, nice. Jenny, Christian, excellent. Waiting for the rest. All right, while the rest of you is connecting, all right, then we have Christian, nice. So while the rest of you is connecting, eh, I'll explain to you, Nelson, very good, a uh, little bit about the exercise. So we're going to do, eh, or what we're going to do is, we're going to determine if um, 
the picture that we're going to see on the screen is countable or uncountable in some cases, or if we can pluralize or not uh, the item that we're going to see there. So let's see, let's give it a try. So if you haven't been able to connect, uh, you will, uh, you still can join us uh, while we are already in the game, all right? So let me see, let's start. And here we go. There you go. Nice. Maria Elena. Good. Ok. Si todavía no se han podido conectar. Y se pueden... A mí no me carga, Ticho. No le carga. Uy. No, solo se quedó así. Dando Oops. vuelta y vuelta. No ah, carga. refresque la, la, la pantalla. Eh, del, del... No reinicio. Ah, solo refresque la. O le la actualizar a la, a la página. All right, there you go, Ellie, nice, good. So, igual se pueden incorporar eh, ya durante el juego, so don't worry. So let's see, here we go. So, countable and uncountable nouns. So, here we go with the number one. Remember, you select the correct option on your screen, not on mine. Is this countable or uncountable? What do you think? Countable or uncountable? What would it be? We have, we have... And... Time! Countable, of course. What's that? What's there in the picture? What's that? What are those? Cookies. cookies, exactly, cookies. So we can say, we can pluralize it. If we can pluralize it, we can count it. One cookie, two cookies, three cookies, four cookies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that means that is countable. So very good, cookies. Let's see. In positions. All right, Oscar, first place. Uh, second, Nelson, Jenny, Ellie, and Grisel. Very good. Here we go with the next one. Number two, countable or uncountable? What about that? That's peanut butter. Peanut butter. I love peanut butter. Very good, uncountable. So, peanut butter, if, if you notice, <clears throat> it's like a paste, right? It's something that if we touch it, we cannot separate it, if we cannot count it. How can we count that? Is there any way in which we could count peanut butter? Or no, not really. So, lo dejo de tarea, lo vamos a ver más adelante. So, in this case, at least peanut butter per se, mm -mm, uncountable, right? Peanut butter, mantequilla de maní. All right, Oscar still in the first place. Nelson, Ellie going up, very good. Jenny and Grisel, nice. Next one, number three. Countable or uncountable? Mm, there you go. Ice cream. Countable or uncountable? And uncountable. Very good. Nice. You're on fire tonight. So, indeed. In Spanish, we say, eh, deme tres sorbetes, ¿verdad? But in English, uh -uh, we cannot say that. We wouldn't say, give me three ice creams, right? Uh -uh. Cones of ice cream, probably, or scoops of ice cream. We'll talk about that soon, so you will see. 
So very good. Let's see the next one. All right, Oscar is still in the first place. Ellie going up, Jenny going up, Grisel as well, and Christian on fire going up too. Excellent. Let's see number four. Countable or uncountable? Huh. What do you think? Let's see, let's see. Countable or uncountable? Countable, come on. What's this? What's in the picture? It's a? It's a sandwich. It's a sandwich, exactly. So I have a sandwich. I can prepare two sandwiches, right? Three sandwiches, so I can count them. I'm not talking about the bread. I'm talking about the whole thing, like right? the sandwich as a whole. So I can count them. So very good. So in this case, oh. countable. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Next one. Oscar, all right, Oscar is still in the first place. Ellie, Jenny, Grisel, and Carlos now going up. Very good. Next one. Make this noun plural. I eat. Ya le di la respuesta. <laughs> anyway. So I eat. Let's see, let's see. And I am he what? Oh my god, the devil is in the details. Got you. In this case, yes, we use it in the plural form. We are accustomed, I mean, we usually would say something like this, when we are making plurals in English, we say, for example, chair, oh, chari, chair, so just one, in the plural, chairs, right? So we just add an S and we say, that's it, right? Chair, chairs. But sometimes we not only need an S, we need, E-S, like in the case of sandwich, so singular, and the plural in this case, sandwiches. Siempre que eh, la palabra termine en C-H o S-H, por ejemplo, no solo agregamos la S, sino E-S. All right, so keep that in mind. Sandwiches, sandwiches. O como diría mi abuelita, sándwiches, right? No, don't say that. There you go. All right. <laughs> no, and that is in the same. Let's see. Next one. All right. Hey, Jenny just went to the first place and now it's on fire. Ellie, Oscar, Grisel, and Christian. All right. Next one. Make this now plural. I want two. This is a tricky one. Think about it. Remember the previous example. I want two. Oh my God, holy moly, holy moly, what happened? So, ice cream, ¿se acuerdan que les dije? In Spanish, we say, deme tres sorbetes. In English, uh -uh, we don't say that. So, I can say, I want three ice cream, uh, cones of ice cream, where I cono de lado, cono de sorbete. Or scoops. Scoops are these things that we are seeing in the picture. A scoop of ice cream is what we call bolas de sorbete, right? What they get with the uh, with a, wow. that spoon, right? So that's a scoop 
of ice cream. So, no le cupo. Esa es trampa. Esa es trampa, porque no nos explicó qué era lo que quería. Ey, pero le dio una pista. Sí, no, 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 es trampa. Pero hubo alguien que lo tuvo, bueno, let's see. ¿Por qué? Porque la, la fotito solo tiene el ice cream, no tiene los conos. That's why, that was the no, only no, option. No, 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 es cool. trampa. Vaya, fue punto menos para mí. Let's see. Jenny got it correct. Very good. All right. So there you go. Scoops of ice cream. Let's see the next one. Let's see. Make this noun plural. I need three. How would we, how would we say this? Think about it. Remember, peanut butter, uncountable. Let's see, let's see. And time. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Jars of peanut that butter. Exactly. Yeah. We cannot say peanut butter, it's non countable, right? So we, we agreed on that uh, before. So we say peanut butter is uncountable. So we cannot say peanut butter, right? Uh uh. We cannot also say a peanuts butter. Mm -mm. The only option is jars of peanut butter. What's a jar? What's a jar? Any ideas? Jarra o tarrón. Ajá, exactly. Jarra. Una jarra. jarra. Or in a good Salvadoran, we would say un bote, right? Tres botes de mantequilla de maní. <laughs> so that's what when we go to the supermarket. When we go to the supermarket, we ask sometimes people who work there, right? Hey, eh, where can I get a jar of peanut butter, right? What are the jars of peanut butter? Oh, aisle three, right? For example. So those jars eh, is what we call just botes. We use jars also for jelly, right? Mermelada, eh, mayonnaise, some eh, sauces, uh, tomato sauce, sometimes eh, peanut butter. In some cases, you're going to find those presentations. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. What? Beer. Beer, yes, that's a different jar. Uh -huh. That's a, a different, uh, we would say like, that's a pint of beer, right? Uh, una jarra de cerveza, that's a different oh. thing. Yeah, pero tranquilo, que hoy es jueves, no, no es viernes. So. Ah, <laughs> Hasta mañana damos ese ejemplo, hoy no. Mañana. <laughs> nice, no. nice, nice. <laughs> Good, let's see. So, all right, positions changing. Ellie going to the first place. Good. Jenny, Ellie. Oscar, Grisel, and Christian. Nice. Let's see. Next one. So, lo vamos a hacer diez. So, let's see. Make this noun plural. I bought six. Six. Fish. Uh -huh. I gave you the rule. Don't forget it. Remember the rule. Let's see, let's see. And excellent. There you go. So it was unanimous. I bought six pitches, right? Pitches. So the word peach ends in ch. So if it ends in ch, I cannot just add the s. I add es. So peaches. Excellent. There you go. All right. Carlos going up. Let's see the next one. Number nine. What about this one? Make this noun plural. I cooked eight last night. Mm 
think about it. Excellent. There you go. Nice. Potatoes, right? Also, the rule or the same rule that applies for the other plurals with CH and SH applies for this one. If the noun ends in an O, then I add also ES, right? Like in this case, potato, potatoes. Good. Next one, let's see. Jenny returning to the first place. Ellie, Oscar on fire. Grisel and Carlos. Let's see. The last one. This is A of letters. This is a of letters. Hmm. Oh my God, there you go. It's a head of letters. So sometimes we're going to have these examples in which things are completely different, like the way we see it in Spanish and the way they see it in English. Mi mamá me mandaba a comprar, anda, mi mamá me decía, anda, tráeme tres lechugas, right? Ya iba yo a traer tres lechugas, right? So I knew it was three heads of letters. But in English, letters is uncountable. So I cannot say three letters, right? Uh-uh. What I can do is, I can use the term heads of letters, cabeza de lechuga, right? We don't say that in, in Spanish, a menos que le digan de apodo a alguien así, pero no, no lo hacemos así como que para referirnos al, 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 al vegetal o la verdura, right? So, si decimos una cabeza de ajo, for example, but no uh, head of, of letters. But in English, that's the term. So there you go. So let's see final scores. So we have third place, Ellie, very good. Second, Jenny, oh my God. And the first place goes to Oscar. Very good, nice. Teacher, pero, pero Oscar es trampa porque eran tres contra uno. <laughs> Tenía barra y él tenía ayuda, él tenía ayuda. They were cheering him up, they were there like, yeah. So nice, very good. Excellent then. So congratulations, Oscar. Good, good. Okay, so let's see. Wonderful. So why are we reviewing this about a countable and uncountable nouns? Because the topic that we are going to see is related to um, these situations, right? In which sometimes we might have a countable or uncountable noun. So let me share here this. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about there is and there are. So, when do we use there is? When do we use there are? What are, are the uses of these expressions? Pretty much, that's what we are going to find out right now. We use these expressions to denote the existence or non-existence of objects in a specific location. So, for example, I can say if I'm looking here at my room, well, I have a background so you can see it, but I can say there is a whiteboard in the room. There is a whiteboard in the room. So what am I saying here? I'm pointing out that there is this object, right, una pizarra, in this room, so it exists here. So I use there is, but I can say also there aren't enough windows in 
in the office, let's say. There aren't enough windows in the office. Huh? So here I am saying that I'm not talking about the existence of something. I'm talking about the non-existence of something else here, which is in this case, the windows, they aren't enough. So this is how we use this uh, structure, right? In Spanish, we would say, uh, hay, right? Hay una pizarra o no hay suficiente ventanas, right? Depending on the context, it could be affirmative or negative. And most important, we got to be careful whenever we are talking about a singular or a plural noun. Also, if it's countable or uncountable. For example, I would say there's some water in the glass. There's some water in the glass. If I say this, if there's no way in which I could say there are some waters. Uh -uh. Hay aguas en el vaso. Uh -uh. Never. Unless I'm from Mexico. No que fuera de Mexicano, tal vez. Las aguas. But no, right? So usually we wouldn't do that. So we know water is uncountable. That's out of the question. So I need to use the corresponding uh, the corresponding verb according to the number or in this case, if the noun is countable or, or uncountable. In this one here, I'm using a contraction, but if you wanna see it in the complete way, well, you know, this is a contraction for is, right? There is some water in the glass. Now, let's see. Oh, hmm. Luis, can you give me an example using there is or there are based on some things that you have around in your room right now? There are four girls in the classroom. There are four? Four girls. Oh, there you go. Las tiene controladas, Luis. All right. There are four girls. <laughs> there are four girls in the classroom or in the class, right? Very good. There are four girls in the class. Perfect. Very good, Luis. Nice. So let's see. <laughs> Luis, you select another person. Sorry, teacher. Select another person, another classmate, Luis. Tell her names, Mr. Louis. <laughs> Elizabeth. Ya se puso nervioso, yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth, all righty, let's see. Elizabeth. Now, can you give me an example, Elizabeth, eh, about some things that are around you or in your room right now? Using there is or there are? There is a cell phone in my room. There is a cell phone. There you go. In my room. Very good. So there is a cell phone in my room. There you go. Perfect. Let's see. Elizabeth, you select another person. Okay. Oscar. Let's see. Oscar. So... Oscars, another example um, using there is or there are, affirmative or negative, as you want. There are my car in the garage. Ah, there are or there is, or do you have? There are my cars, uh, seven cars in the garage. Oh my God. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> right? Sí, there. De huete, de huete, de huete, de huete. <laughs> There are my cars in the garage. There you go. So there are my cars there in the garage. Good. Yes, I have uh -huh. a question. I have yeah. a question. Go ahead. Yes. There are my cars in the garage. No, it's at garage. 
porque están dentro. No. The use, of, the use of prepositions in, on, at. Remember, at for specific places. In, whenever you are inside a room. And on, whenever we're talking about surfaces. So, in this case, we're talking about something that is inside a room. We use in, right? Like in the room, in the kitchen, in the living room, in the garage, etc., etc. Yes. Nice. Anytime. Good. All righty. So let's see. Select another person. One more. Oscar. Mr. Nelson Gavarrete. Mr. Gavarrete. Let's see. Nelson. Okay. <laughs> hey, let's see. All right. Let's okay, see. Any teacher. There. Uh -huh. There are three, three here in the mix. There are three? Here? Here? Chica, uh -huh. here. A uh, girls, uh -huh. there are three girls. Uh -huh. In the beach. In my life. <laughs> in your room right now, then. <laughs> hey, in Joyna. Hey, wow. What are you hey, doing? <laughs> you are in class, Mister Navarrete. Mister Navarrete, what are you doing? <laughs> At the beach, right? So that's what hey, hey, Can I help you? you? <laughs> Can I help you, Mister? In the beach, right? <laughs> so there you go <laughs> good so this is how we use there is and there are but uh, remember that we can also use it in negative forms also i might use it like for example if i say there are no, um, let's say, there are no animals in the park. Or there aren't animals in the park. Sometimes you're going to see when we are talking about the negative form of these expressions, you might get to see these two alternatives, right? There are no or there aren't. Both are correct. So the same happens if I want to use is instead of are. I can say if there is no wine in the bottle or there isn't wine in the bottle. So in both cases, it's correct, right? So it's the same thing, same idea, nothing is changing, but just the way in which I am using uh, the expression, right? Or the, the negative form for these sentences. So I can, well, you can choose the one you consider is the easiest for you. Both forms are correct, okay? So there you go. Nice. And what is the most common one? Both, right? People in the States, they use both expressions interchangeably. So you might get to listen to uh, both of them, right? Okay. Uh -huh. uh, there is no, el no, no lleva la T. No. Uh -uh. Uh, that's the difference, right? Um, between these two expressions, there is one in which we use literally, there is no, no, right? And the other one, there is not, or there isn't. So both are okay, but one of them, it omits the T. So no es un not, sino que es un no, right? Y, how or when do I use these expressions? For example, in this case, in the last one, eh, there is no wine in the bottle. Aquí estoy diciendo que no hay, que ya no hay vino en la botella. 
En la segunda, there isn't wine mm. in the bottle. Y prácticamente es lo mismo, ¿no? Ya no hay, o no hay vino en la botella. Podría, podría, y esto es siendo así bien meticuloso, eh, ocupar la segunda, si lo que quiero decir es que no hay vino, hay otra cosa, no hay jugo de naranja, por ejemplo, o es una sangría, no, no, no es vino. If there isn't wine in the bottle, it is sangria, right? For example. So it could be, ya siendo un poquito más picky, eh, pero así en términos generales, es prácticamente lo mismo. Es decir, no hay, right? There is no or there is. So there you go. Nice. Okay, there you go. So, besides the affirmative and the negative form, we also have uh, questions, right? We can ask questions also in the same way, using the same structures. Like when we say, is there, uh, we wait, is there an office in San Salvador? Jesus. San Salvador. Is there an office in San Salvador? When we're talking about the, our company, right? Hey, is there an office in San Salvador for that company? Yes, right? Yes, there is. Short answer. Or no, there isn't. As you prefer. I can also ask in plural, are there, a, are there any new employees this month? Are there any new employees this month? Hay empleados nuevos este mes, right? And then you can say, no, there aren't, or yes, there are. So both would be accepted, right? Notice something in this question. Um, I used any instead of some. Será que puedo ocupar some en esta pregunta también o no? O me quedo con any. What do you think? Uh -huh. Podría decir, are there some new employees this month? Are there some new employees this month? Yes. Ah, very good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, ah, por ahí me voy a decir algo más. Luis. Sí, en mi en, 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 en mi opinión eh, se puede usar. Y, so we can y use sure. some. Ajá. Some. Me oye raro. Maybe, ajá, maybe any new employee. Pero, pero, sorry, new. sorry, 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 pero ya hay. Ya dijo, ya dijo el teacher. Bien, salvadoreño. Ya dijo el teacher que si, que si tenemos la idea, que se vale? Ey, no, ya, ey, ey, ey. Pues sí. But this time, that's the wrong idea. So, this idea is in Spanish, como él dijo. Y this is okay in Spanish, because in Spanish we sometimes translate and we say son algunos, right? Are there some new employees? Pero alguien por ahí decía, pero es que soy raro. Could be for a native speaker, for a gringo, as we say, this will sound weird, right? Because they don't use some in questions. What do they use? Any. They use any for questions and negative statements. So, nosotros al traducirlo, le ponemos algunos, aun cuando any 
y no siempre significa algunos para nosotros. Y estamos más acostumbrados al son, ¿verdad? Pero si es pregunta o una oración negativa la que van a hacer y está entre poner son o any, any, right? For negative sentences and also for questions. So there you go. So very good. In this case. Teacher, teacher, sorry. Uh -huh. Yes, in go ahead. Case, in, this, in this case, in this case, the subject employees, uh, no, no, no tiene nada que ver con el any. So no, lo no. Vuelve, lo vuelve, lo vuelve algunos. Ajá, uh -huh. exactly. In the translation. Right. <laughs> in the translation, yes. But then when we structure the question in English, any, right? So that's the thing. Teacher, pero es que eso ha de ser como, ha de ser como también y tampoco. <laughs> ¿Cómo es el también y tampoco? Porque, vaya, hay gente que también lo utilizan para algo negativo cuando se tiene que utilizar tampoco, como... Por ejemplo, yo había escuchado que hay gente que dice, a mí no me gusta, a mí también no me gusta, y es a mí tampoco. Entonces, si you. entiende el contexto, no importa que esté malo. Fíjense que les voy a contar algo que me pasó cuando yo estudiaba, en, iba como por el segundo año en la U, y conocí a un australiano, bueno, para mí en el momento era un gringo, ¿verdad?, en la calle, y yo quería practicar mi inglés. Eh, ahí, entrecortado que tenía en ese tiempo, este, yo quería practicar, ¿eh? quería a ver, ver si le entendía a él y saber si él me entendía a mí. Entonces lo vi perdido en la calle y en una parada de bus y le pregunté, hey, can I help you? Y me dijo, oh my God, finally, someone who speaks English, please help me. I need to go to Suchitoto. Y yo me quedé, what? Yo soy de Santa Ana, by the way. Eso me pasó allá en Santa Ana. So, ni yo sabía cómo ir a su chitoto, ¿eh? o sea, en ese tiempo. <risa> o sea, yo estaba más perdido que el gringo. Y le digo yo, ah, well, I'm, let's try. ¿verdad? O sea, I can guide you to the bus station so that you can take a bus. All right, he said. En el camino eh, íbamos platicando porque estaba un poco cerca donde lo iba a dejar en la parada de bus donde pasan eh, los buses que salen de Santa Ana y cometí dos errores. El primero le dije, are you from, porque su acento era, era diferente, creí que era de Inglaterra, y le dije, are you British? Y me frunció el ceño, o sea, se enojó y me dijo, no, I'm not British, me dijo, I'm from Australia. Hijo, le dije yo, o sea, primer error, ¿verdad? Él se ofendió, bueno, no se llevan tan bien las personas de, de Inglaterra y las personas de Australia. Y yo ni idea, yo no sabía. So, anyway, se ofendió porque lo comparé. Bah. Pero es igual, seguimos hablando. Y lo que les quiero decir es, llegó un momento en el que nos tenemos que pasar la calle. Entonces le dije yo a esta persona, hey, let's pass the street. Let's pass the street. Literal, eso es pasarse en la calle. Ajá, exactly, it's cross. Y él se quedó así como de, let's pass the street. Y se quedó un ratito así como de, do you mean that we need to cross the street? Oh, yeah, le dije yo, that thing, right, so exactly. Y en el momento yo no le puse mucha atención, no, pero eso se quedó, ¿qué me quiso decir? Porque la expresión no es pass the street, es cross the street. Algo que para mí tenía sentido, ¿verdad? o sea, se iba. La idea para mí, ahí voy, ¿verdad? Pass the street, para él, nada. O sea, él se quedó como de, me entendió, me imagino, porque obvio, ¿verdad? íbamos caminando en sentido a cruzarnos la calle, pero eso para él no significaba, este... No era el verbo correcto que él, ellos utilizarían. Mucha gente, muchos teachers eh, nos decimos, o cuando nos preguntan estas cosas, pero ¿y por qué se dice cross the street y no pass the street entonces, teacher? Porque sí, decimos nosotros, ¿no? El típico porque sí de los teachers. Eh, pero realmente no, right? Estas son eh, 
cositas que se llaman collocations. Collocations son frases que ya, ya van, este, que ya están definidas y van como en este caso, cross the street. Puedo hacer, puedo utilizar otro verbo en vez de cross. Neles, right? So, uh -uh. Otro ejemplo de collocations es cuando decimos do your homework. Eh, este, imperative, do your homework, right? So, pero do es hacer y make es hacer también. Entonces, ¿puedo ponerle make? Mm -mm, no. Si usted le dice a alguien, a un, a un native speaker, make your homework, se va a quedar igual como el, el muchacho este, ¿no? Se va a quedar un ratito así como de, ¿qué me habrá tratado de, de, de querer insinuar a esta persona? Y eventualmente cae en que usamos mal el verbo porque ocupamos homework y, y lo asocian, ¿no? Do. Pero para ellos les hace cortocircuito, ¿right? Porque no es el verbo que ellos utilizarían. So, no puedo ocupar make. Right. Y mucho menos podría decir do your homework. Porque homework es no contable. Otra diferencia con nosotros, ¿no? Que es tareas. Para nosotros las tareas las podemos pluralizar, pero en inglés no. Podría decir do your homework en general o home, uy, homework assignments. Your homework assignments. Que esa sí sería literalmente las tareas. Right? Your homework assignments. So, esas cositas ahí a veces nos hacen perder la idea. Y, y, y tal vez las personas no nos van a entender a la primera. Eh, podría ser que eventualmente nos eh, entiendan, ¿no? Pero sí eh, se les desconecta el cablecito a ellos cuando ocupamos un verbo que no es una preposición que no es, una palabrita, no corta el circuito ahí en, la, en, el, en, en lo que ellos están entendiendo de nosotros. So there you go. Ajá, Eli, yes. Le leí la mente. Sí, pero no, ya ah. digo. No, es que lo que yo ah. le quería decir, teacher, no es que sorry. no entiendan, teacher. Ajá. En ningún momento no es que no entiendan porque ellos son los nativos del idioma. Entonces es como cuando una persona está aprendiendo español. Nosotros le entendemos aunque no lo esté hablando bien. Y ellos Exacto. hasta preguntan por qué la I, la I latina tiene tilde y no puntito. Y hacen hasta esas preguntas. Entonces ellos, uno, uno capta, imagínense, cuando uno está aprendiendo el inglés, cuando usted está hablando en inglés, un ejemplo, yo no le entiendo todo, pero hay cosas que se las entiendo y más o menos voy viendo qué quiere decir Ajá. y no soy la nativa. Y a ellos que son nativos, no es que se les desconecte el cable, lo que pasa es que son así. Ellos son así. Yeah, but we can say it, right? We can say it. They got the idea, but mm, there are good people and there are not so nice people, but that's a topic for another story. <laughs> that's another chapter. So good. All right. Are you for you? Sorry, teacher. Uh -huh. Yes, tell me. I know it's time. In the assistance. Yes. Yes. I know. Yeah, I just knew that. So yeah, let's see. So I have it here, actually. But thank you. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. So I have it here ready, actually. So here we go. Y Ana Beatriz Campos de Guzmán, not here, y pidió permiso. Then we have Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga Mejía. Blanca Elizabeth. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> nah, no. <laughs> nice, Blanquita. Good. Cosita de the pandemia. Don't worry. <laughs> nice. Yeah. En la asistencia, nada más, Blanquita. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right, so there you are. Nice. 
So, we continue. Carlos Antonio Escobar Hernández. Present. All right, thank you, Carlos. Let's see, Carlos Javier Crespi. Carlos Javier Crespi. Are you there? Not there. So, not here then. Let me see. So, we continue with oh, wait. Uh, Christian Ernesto Lasso. Present teacher. All right. Thank you very much, Christian. Good. We continue with Denise Grisel Brizuela. Present teacher. Nice. Thank you very much. Uh, we continue with Ember Giovanni Polio. Ember, I guess, still driving, but he was there. So nice. All right. So we continue with Francisca Elizabeth Martinez. Present teacher. All right, thank you very much. Next, we have Jose Eduardo Guzman. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose Eduardo, good. Then we have Karen Vanessa Morataya. Not here, por ahí me saltea Juan Carlos Rivas, I'm sorry. I hear teacher. <laughs> nice, Juan Carlos. Thank you very much. Then we have Luis Alfonso Martinez. Present teacher. All right. Thank you, Luis. Very good. And then we have Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate. I'm here, teacher. All right. Thank you very much, Maria Elena. Then we have Nelson Gabarrete Merino. Here, teacher. All right. Thank you, Nelson. Very good. Uh, next, Omar Francisco Hernandez. Omar, I guess he's absent today. So we go to the next person, Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Present. All right. Thank you very much, Oscar. And the last but not least, Jenny Suleima Santos. Present. All right, thank you, Jenny, very good. All righty then, there you go. So let's see, let's see. And here we go. All right, so now that we have a better idea on the use of there is, there are, and these expressions that we have been uh, studying, I have a little practice here. So let me see. Here it is. All right. So I'm going to share with you a link so that we can actually work on this little exercise that I'm going to show you. But before that, I want to show it to you. Okay, we're going to work on this um, live worksheet here. And we are going to work in, I would say that in trios for this one. How many are we? We are 13. Yeah, I guess it could work. So we're going to work in trios for this one here. And what we are going to do is, based on what we know about there is and there are, we're going to check the picture in the first part and we're going to determine if the statements are true or false, right? So we need to pay attention to the picture to know if these statements are true or false. In the second part, we are going to write, there is or there are, depending on the different sentences that we have here, right? To complement the sentences. And that's pretty much it. You're going to send me this practice, okay? So, esta práctica me la van a enviar. ¿Cómo me la van a enviar? You click here where it says Terminado. You click here and it's going to give you two choices. Fíjense bien. No le vayan a dar donde dice comprobar mi respuesta. Yo sé que, que quieren saber cuánto sacaron, pero denle clic en el otro, donde dice enviar mi respuesta a mi profesor. So, 
Here, acá le va a pedir una, esta información. Igual lo va a dejar ver cuánto se sacaron. So, don't worry. Y, pero con esto yo también voy a recibir el resultado. Y here you're going to type the names of the people that were working with you. Me van a poner el nombre de las eh, personas que estaban trabajando con usted. Solo me lo van a mandar uno por grupo. Y so you type the names. When it says curves, you just type B5, right? B5. Asignatura or subject, English. And here you need to type my email. Acá tiene que ser eh, mi correo. Está registrado con mi correo personal. Así que punto menos el que se ríe. Es rollandstone06 at gmail.com. Ah, ya había algunos que me voy a dejar puntos. So there you go. So. Me dio risa eso. Yo me reí. Quise ayer, quise hacer eso, pero yo no le pude enviar porque no sabía que eso se enviaba. Ah, sí, el de ayer, el de ayer no lo iban a enviar, por eso no, ah, le, no le había explicado. Sí. Porque sí. tenía ese, estaba un poco más complejo de enviar. Pero esto no, este está sencillo. So, y este sí me lo van a enviar. Right. Okay. Nice, good. Ok, then. So. I'm going to make the rooms and I'm going to share the link with you. So let's see. Let's do it. Okay. So I have, there's going to be a group of four. Uh, no, 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 wait. Yeah, let's go. There's going to be a group of four people. Carlos, Ember, Oscar, and Jenny. Group number one. Y Blanquita, Cristian y Juan Carlos, group number two. Y Grisel, Elizabeth y Nelson, you are, uh, group number three. Y José Eduardo, Luis y María Elena, you are team number four. All right. So, I'm going to share the link in the chat before I open the rooms. So, there you have it. Y le voy a poner ahí también mi correo para que me lo pueda enviar. Let's see. There you go. All right. So let's see, let's see. I'm going to open the rooms then. I'm going to give you, let's say, in six minutes for you to complete the practice and so that you can send it. And once you're back, we're going to check the answers also here in the main session. All right. So you can start working now, six minutes now. Hello, Blanquita. 
Me sacaron. Pues sí. sí, vi que se le congeló. Let me see. Sí, voy a... Ahorita ya estoy. Ah, nice, nice. La voy a agregar ahorita al grupo 2. Ahí está. Oh, Hoy sí, sí. Ya, le, ya le va a aparecer ahí.
Esto está mal. Ahí viene, 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 charros. <laughs> charro, charro. Go back to English. <laughs> Dad, how are you doing? Easy, difficult, so so? Creíamos que nos iba a ir mejor. El juego tiene un error. ¿Cuál es cuál? Jenny, tres errores. Error. Tres, tres errores. Ah, okay. sí. What is the mistake, teacher? Ajá, uh -huh, let's see. Uh -huh. Which one did you get incorrect? I don't see it uh, in forward. Did it, did it tell you? No le dice. Uh, let's see. It should mark, lo debería de marcar acá. It should mark like in a different color. That's weird. Ah, pues sí, tiene un error el... Ah, sí. Por eso nos sacamos siete. <laughs> 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 we'll see, we'll see. Ya veremos, ya veremos. Don't worry. No, you're done. Yes. That's right. Okay, nice. So I just wanted to double check. So let's check it in the in the main session and then we'll find out about the mistakes. Okay, so nice. I'll see you then in the main session. Okay, so let's see, here I have first part of the team, nice. Let's wait for the rest of the people, they are coming. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Goody, goody. Okay. Still waiting for some of you. All right, so let's check if, well, the correct answers for the exercise so that we can dissipate any doubts or any problems we can have with the practice. So, oh, here they are. Here we have the rest. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> So don't worry, you can send it yeah, before we, we actually finish checking it. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Teacher, teacher, uh -huh. no lo alcancé a enviar. Aquí está y ya no lo puedo enviar. Why? ¿Por qué no lo puedo Aquí enviar? solo dice, por favor, introduce otro curso, un nivel. Ah, uh, what? No, no lo puedo enviar. Ah, uh, el otro dos. Ah, ya vi. Y lo... creo, ah. creo que ya sé por qué. Ay, ay, ay. <ríe> Eso no tiene que parecer, vea. Espérese. Si no lo pone, no te da ni celda. Cha, cha, cha. <ríe> Chica. Se le borró todo. Es que no le puso el curso B5, se le borró todo. Y... Le iba a poner B5. Eso va a sí, B5 le va a poner B5. Maybe you, you click this one and not this one. Esa es. Ajá. All right. Ahí. So it's B5, English, and my email address. And there you go. <laughs> ya no puedo. Oh my God, really? Ya no puedo, teacher. Jesus Christ, oh my. ¿Por qué le pasó? ¿Por qué, ¿Por qué se le cerró? No sé. Ponga de cero, hermano. <laughs> <laughs> qué mala onda. Don't worry, don't sí. worry. Mire, no. Later. Yeah, don't worry. Teacher, no se uh -huh. puede. No, pero es que para que vea el día es que no. No, no está oh. acá. Uh -huh. Let's see. ¿Ve? ¿A dónde me lo estás haciendo? No. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Al 
están los nombres. Es que para que, no, para, ahorita está compartiendo el teacher, para que salga el de ella, tiene que, ver, que compartir ver. usted. Sí. Ah, sí. Ahora intenta compartir. Espérenme, teacher. Espérenme. ¿Falta el nombre de los participantes? Eh, there you go. Now you can share. Mire, ya vio. Let's see. ¿Qué falta ahí? Ah, oh, no, but you can do it. El, y, yeah. el correo falta. Ah, no, si aquí está. No le has puesto el curso. curso. La asigna. Ah, es lo que le estaba Dura, mostrando. Dura, cinco. Yeah. Curso. Por eso, pero ¿qué, qué grupo es? No sé. B5. 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 Así. Yeah. Yes. Y la asignatura en inglés. English, yeah. English. Come on. In English. In English. Okay. There you go. Ajá, uh -huh. and that's it. Ajá. Uh -huh. Thanks. Ya me veo. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Well, ok, nice. Good. Excellent. Vale. So, Ahorita. Wow, oh, qué susto. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Me voy a cero, Nelson. <laughs> ya Grisel está aquí. <laughs> no. Pero es posible. <laughs> no. No, I'm just kidding. All right, let's check the correct answers here. Let's just find out here. And based on what we had on the picture, we have, there is a dog, true or false? There is a dog. It's true. True, true, true. right? So true. the dog was here. I don't know what the dog is doing. It's like drinking something, I don't know. But here's the dog. True. Then we have, there are the four dog drink uh, gray goose. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the dog drinks a uh, gray goose. Yeah, it, it's like it's she's drinking something. Maybe. <laughs> I'm Maybe. not sure what the dog is drinking, but anyway. Only chaparro. Only chaparro. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> all right, all right. So in number two, we have there are four balls is that true i can see one oh. and two so i guess it's balls yeah Mira que está la par, no es ball. i don't Esa. think so i'm not sure what this pero is siempre es four, pero pensé que era una <laughs> so For a i'm not sure <laughs> Yeah, but no, don't think so. So I just think it's just two. So this one oh. and this one. So I would say this one is false. Oh. Then we have, there is a snake. There is a snake. Snake, snake. false. false. Uh, snake, false, right? So I don't see any snakes there. So false. There are some flowers. Over there. True. True, uh -huh. True right here. Exactly. So they are over there in the, in the background. So that's true. Then we have, there is a purple jacket. True. A little girl. True. Yes. Ah, true. very good. The little girl here. Exactly. She's wearing the purple jacket. So nice. Then we have, there are two guitars. Only one. Of course. Uh, yeah, both, right? Only guitar, one. Guitar. Uh, Who's playing the guitar? Both. Mm, Who's playing the guitar? Who? I don't know. How do you say Foca? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a <home> <laughs> room. La pusimos, dice, no la vimos. Oh, my God. So, there, there was Pero one. solo hay una, donde only one. one. Ah, yes, yeah, one. Yeah, it was one. Teacher, uh -huh. teacher it was y one. Snake, one snake es serpiente. Serpiente, yes. exactly. De suerte yeah. no salió buena. Ah, es una serpiente. Ah, no, nueve, entonces. Pensamos no tengo... que era snack. What? <laughs> no, 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 no,
<laughs> no, the next one. There is a pencil. There is Ooh, a pencil. True. Yes. True. true. Yes. It's this one here, right? So. Yeah, it's true. Plus, yes. No está usando el trampolín, pero yes, there is a pencil yes. here. <laughs> nice. Then we have, there are two socks. With the dog. Two. Ah, oh. very good. And here, close to the dog, right in the, in the chair. So very good. There are two socks. Nice. Yes. Excellent. There is a shark. Yes. 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 Where is the shark? With Bro. the chef. Ah, next to the to the chef yes. here, right? Chef. So here you can see like the Chew. silhouette of a shark. So very good. So there is one there. And then it but says he's a friendly shark. I hope so. It's baby shark. <laughs> That's crap. It's a Black baby shark. <laughs> All right. And then we have the last one. There are two black Plus, cats. Solo uno. Solo un gato, yes. right? Only one? Yes. Oh. yes. Only one. Cat. Only, only one. one. Yes, only one cat. Yeah, so this is false. There's cat. only one cat. False. false. There you go. False. Very good. So that's false. the first part. It's, it's Luna de la Sailor Moon. Ah, yeah, it looks like it. Exactly. Eso pensé yo. Eso parecía Luna. Exactly. With the Sailor Moon's cat. Sailor Moon nice. cat. <laughs> good. Then we have the second part. It says, what do you think? There is or there are a restaurant? There is. There is. There is, a restaurant. There is because it's there only is. one restaurant. So there, there is. is a restaurant. There is a restaurant. Good. Restaurant. Number two. Two swimming there are. pools. There are. There are. There are. Very good. There are. There are two there are. swimming pools. There are two. Four cinemas. There, there are. There are. There are. There are, there are, there are, good. There are, there are four are. cinemas. A, a supermarket. There is. There is. There is. There is. Right. There is a supermarket. Only one. A farm. It's singular. There is. There is. There is. There is a farm. There you go. A farm. And the last one. Three parks. There are. There are. There, there are. are. There, there are. are three. Three parts. Three parts. Three parts. There you go. Exactly. And then you had to match like the, the definitions there with the pictures, but that was uh, pretty easy, right? It's very good. So I guess you got the idea here on when to use there is and there are. So nice. Excellent. Now, based on this, and we just practice about there is and there are, we have something in the book that is related to this, and we are going to find it here on page 19. On page 19, okay. there you're going to see something related to there is and there are. Now, it says directions and instructions. And here we have, a, in the upper part, it says, what places are there in your workplace? A, how many meeting rooms do exist in your company, right? We're going to talk about different, like, a, rooms or different areas, you know, in our workplace and how we can ask about that using the reason there are. So... I'm going to read the conversation first for you, and then I'll tell you what we're going to do. So it says, eh, my name is Tom. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Orson. I work for Hodge. Oh, I know that company. There's an office in San Salvador, downtown. Yes, we're growing. So there are not many branches in the country yet. There are a few. What company do you work for? I work for ECO, the painting company. There are 25 branches in the country. That's great. I visited one of the stores the other day. Yeah, there are six in San Salvador. We're planning on launching one in Santa Ana these days. 
there isn't one yet. So there you go. Now, as you can see, these two people are talking about their workplaces, about their companies, and about a, how many branches or how many a, offices they have in the country. There is something here, San Salvador downtown. What's the downtown? What's the downtown? It's the center of the city. Exactly. Very good. The center of the city, right? So that's downtown. So yeah, very good. Excellent. Let me see. I guess there are not like too many new words in this one. So now that you know about the use of there is and there are, here we have three, let's say, sentences here. It says, there are three offices in San Salvador. What do you think it should be? Is or are? Are. Are, very good. Uh -huh. There are three offices in San Salvador. What about number two? There are one story in Toyapango. Is. 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 There, there is, right? There is one store in Soyapango. And the last one? Are. Are. Uh, there are. There are, there are not many offices. any offices in this region yet. Nice. So there you go. So as I was telling you at the beginning, we use there is, there are, or there isn't, and there aren't to express that there that something exists at a determined place or that that something actually doesn't exist, right? So based on this, we have here, let me see, this exercise, right? We are not going to, I wanted to do number six, but I don't think that we're going to have enough time to do it. So, uh, here we have this practice or exercise number five, and it says, read the sentences and find the mistake and correct it. So I'm going to give you like five minutes for you to take a look at these five sentences and so that you can check or find the mistake and you rewrite it. La van a reescribir ya con el error corregido en la línea que está a la par. Right? So you're going to work for this one individually. So I'm just going to give you like five minutes. You can do it there in your book. And then we check it together. All right? So let's see. So five minutes starting now. If you need some help, just let me know. I'm here. Mm.
teacher. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a question to uh -huh. ask in Let's the see. number in the number three. Uh -huh. um, office is singular or plural? Is plural? In this case, it's plural. Uh -huh. uh, only one. Okay. Only that. Nice. Thank okay. you. Okay. Good. Thanks. I believe them finished. Excellent. Nice, Grisel. So what about the rest? They're about to finish. Did you finish already? Can we check now? We finished, teacher. All right, finished. excellent. Good. Okay, let's check the answers. Let's see if you got them correct. So in number one, we have the original says, there is two branches in El Salvador. Hmm. How can you fix this one? There are two. There are, there are two. Uh -huh. There are. Very good. So in there this one here, yeah, we cannot say there is two. If we're using two, we cannot say is, right? So we say there, there are. are. Exactly, two branches in El Salvador. Yeah. Good. What about in number two? It says there are one facility. There, there is one there facility. Is, there is one facility. Ah, let's see. There is one facility, there is one facility. available. Excellent. So here we need to pronounce it, facility. Facility. Uh -huh. facility available. Facility available. Okay. Available. 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 There you go. Nice. Okay. So here we had to change the verb, the verb to be, and also uh, we needed to change from plural facilities to singular facility, only one. So mm -hmm. nice. Facility. Then we have number there. two. There, there is a new office. office. A new office. Oh. There are. Ah, uh, so in this there are a new office. There is a new, new office, office, right? So office was the only thing that was not okay because it was plural. So that's the one. Uh -huh. doesn't match with the verb that I'm using here, which is for the singular is, right? Only one. So there is a new office. Very good. What about number four? There are no 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 There There are There are to work. work. Uh -huh. Very good. Here it was messed up, right? The order was not okay. We can say there are not or there aren't, as you prefer. You can use it completely there contracted, are. but as long as you use it in the right order. So good. And the last there one. Are not. There, aren't. there are not. There are not. Uh -huh. There aren't. There aren't. Or there are not. There are more three boxes lobby. in the lobby. Excellent. Three there boxes are. in the lobby. The lobby. There you go. There are three boxes in the lobby. Okay. There are. All righty then. So, how was it? Was it easy? Difficult? Mm. Well, the moment is... <laughs> is yes, it... teacher. Yes, that's right the spirit. Now. Yes, right now. Now. <laughs> that's the spirit. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> um, <Nice>. I'm individual. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so I guess you got really quick the idea here about using there is and there are. If tomorrow we're going to be we're working a little bit more uh, on these expressions, right? We, we're going to uh, have some more practices with this so that uh, well, we can 
manage it so that we can master it. So you'll see, this is going to be a piece of cake for you. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, uh, some announcements uh, before I uh, start taking the attendance uh, for the last time. Uh, thank you very much for sending the homework assignments uh, yesterday. I guess everybody sent them. So thank you very much for that. Uh, don't forget that right after this class, for example, you're going to have uh, the new ones, right? So we're going to use, or we're going to be uh, like sending these homework assignments every five days. So today's day number one. So Friday, tomorrow is going to be day number two, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday is going to be again, the deadline to send this, uh, the second, uh, or let's say like, the homework assignments for unit number two. Okay, so you keep that in mind um, so that you don't accumulate all the homework assignments till the end, right? So you can work them, uh, for example, the day after the class or as you think of it, as you think is more convenient for you, as long as you don't have to do it at the end of, um, or at the last moment, right? But that's it. But thank you very much for sending them. Okay. Um, what about uh, the forums? Uh, Pueden ver las preguntas del foro. Pueden ver como la pregunta que les aparece abajo de cada, um, de cada video que vamos subiendo en las clases. Uh, yes. Sí no. se ve. Yo la vi, pero lo que no quise opinar. Uh -huh. eh, tenía que poner el título y no, no sabía que poner. Ah, uh, ok, ok. You can just, I guess you can type just forum, forum one o su nombre, right, as you prefer, and then you give your opinion, right, and then you, ah, okay. uh -huh, then you send your answer or your the opinion. Class model, mm -hmm. eh, the teacher, I don't say this, uh -huh. but no nos dijo que teníamos que llenar esa parte. Ah, eh, okay. Por eso todos ah. me imagino de que, bueno, yo anteriormente estuve en otro donde sí lo llenábamos. En su Ajá. momento le pregunté Ajá. si nosotros ah. íbamos a llenar esa parte y, y no le dijo nada. Ah, okay. Ajá. Entonces, pero si dice que hay que llenarlo, hay que llenarlo. Ya, yeah. la cosa es que igual yo, vale, voy a ser honesto, es la prim el primer módulo que fue a través de inglés corporativo. Y ustedes son mi, mi primer módulo con ellos, entonces según lo que me han dicho ellos eh, sí están tomando en cuenta lo de los foros en el lugar donde yo estaba antes, igual siempre se, se nos ha dicho que Isafor revisa los foros o sea, como que ustedes estén participando, ¿no? Entonces por cualquier sí, dejar como cosa, una referencia, ya, una participación exacto. del tema que aparece en el video. Correcto. Ajá, no, no tiene que ser así como una gran respuesta tampoco, sino eh, algo breve, ¿no? Con solo que se ve ahí que usted está participando, creo que ya con eso más que suficiente, ¿no? María. In my case, for this reason, I don't. No oh, I see. You, did, you hadn't But, done it before. Okay. Pero de verdad, sí, ya lo voy a hacer. Nice. Teacher, yo nunca he llenado eso, pero sí Ajá, hay que hacer. Raro. Sí, sí, que que no, no, o sea, no, 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 he escrito nada ahí en, en eso. Bueno, yo me he en el que, pasado de que está hablando. con todos ellos. Okay. Y anteriormente ya había Ajá. hecho otro. Ya sé, ya. Yo, yo he estado, he dado estos cursos con, bueno, con este sería la tercera empresa. Eh, con, la, con una no lo hacíamos. Con la segunda, sí. Y con esta, según me dijeron, también teníamos que hacerlo, pero okay. eh, lo que les digo, ¿no? por cualquier cosa, eh, just write something there. Juan, eh, Carlos tenía una pregunta. Ajá. Sí, teacher. Este, eh, como ya voy a eh, avanzar en la plataforma y como yo no he llenado ninguno de los foros, Ajá. tendría que empezar a través de la primera lección a llenarlo o a partir de esta lección. 
Ahorita sí, ya tendría cero. Entonces, Carlos. Es... No, mentira. <risa> 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 ya no, ya la batió. <risa> no te preocupes, <risa> Carlos, que todo <risa> casi. <risa> no, o sea, podría. Tranquilo. <risa> si no responde, Carlos, tengo un infarto. Es cero. No, es cero más cero más cero. No, o sea, bueno, sí. No, 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 no. Solamente que. La parte después del video, cuando uno tiene que dar, este, no sé, un, un, una Ajá. respuesta o medio proyecto, ahí eso sí no lo he hecho, es la única parte que sí Ajá. no he hecho de toda la plataforma. Sí, tendría, tendría que hacerlo desde el principio. Sí, tendría, que... bueno, según entiendo, tendrían que ser, o sea, tendrían que ir, digamos, por el momento tenían que ponerse el día, ¿no? Con las, eh, con las clases que vamos hasta ahorita, tenían que sí empezar desde la primera. Y. Pero es lo que les digo, no tiene que ser como una gran respuesta, y con algo corto, algo cortito, algo breve, suficiente. No, no, no es necesario ex, explayarse el montón en la, a la hora de responder o de opinar. Y al menos mientras se ponen al día, porque yo sé que ahorita van, y esta sería la sexta. Entonces, y, pues tranquilo, vea, ustedes den su opinión cortita, una, una respuesta corta solo para tener un backup y de que ustedes participan en los foros ¿no? por cualquier cosa. Nice. Ok. Excelente. Alrighty then. Pasamos a asistencia rapidito, chicos. Se nos fue el tiempo. Let's see. So, here we go. All right. So, we have um, Ana Beatriz Campos. No está. Blanca Elizabeth Almarenga. Thank you very much. Y Carlos Escobar. Present. Thank you very much. Y Carlos Javier Crespín. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Carlos. Y Cristian Ernesto Lazo. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Y Denise Grisel Brizuela. Present teacher. Thank you, Grisel. Y Ember Giovanni Polillo. Ember, not there. All right, so we continue with Francisca Elizabeth Martinez. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Jose Eduardo Guzmán. Present teacher. Thank you. And eh, Juan Carlos Rivas Joel. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Y Karen Vanessa Morataya. Is not here. Eh, Luis Alfonso Martinez. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Present. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Eh, next, Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate. Present. Thank you, Maria Elena. Eh, we have also Nelson Gavarrete Merino. Present teacher. All right, nice. Omar Francisco Hernández. Bueno, no se pudo conectar ahora. Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Present. Thank you, Oscar. And Jenny Suleima Santos. Present. Thank you very much. Ok, guys. Ahora le tocaría entonces el turno a Grisel de quedarse los últimos 10 minutos. No hay problema, Grisel. No, teacher. No, nice. Chidísimo. Okay, for the rest then, well, thank you very much. Have a good night, sweet dreams, get some rest, and I'll see you guys two more retos. So have a good night, people. Have a good night. Thank you, good teacher. Night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Take care. Teacher. Uh -huh. uh, hey, Christian. Two yes. minutes, two minutes. Uh, yes, one yes. minute. Eh, bueno, eh, a su WhatsApp le envié una captura de pantalla porque Ajá. estoy desarrollando lo que es el ejercicio de este día. Solo me le da ah, una chequeada porque no sé si quiero que me eh, haga una observación. Ajá. Si es que es parte de la plataforma que ya alguna vez ha pasado o Ajá. yo estoy mal en algo y me puede hacer una observación. Solo eso le quería decir, ahí se lo envié a su WhatsApp. Let's see. Tuvo mala la 3 y la 5. Correcto. Ajá. 
y yo ya revisé en varias ocasiones la, la, la forma y uh -huh. pues, creo que en las cinco hubiera sido mejor tal vez se hubiera puesto there aren't y people to work people en vez de persons uh, en okay. la aunque, aunque no me aunque no me dé la opción verdad mm, porque en no. realidad Ajá. no me da la opción literalmente uh, yo solo estaba haciendo la es de multiple choice si gusta la voy a revisar y la voy a revisar al, al, al terminar y la clase mm -hmm. Y, y yo, le, yo le digo. Yo espero la observación. Thank nice. you very much. Sí, All right, take care. Ok, Grisel. Nice. So, okay. estos 10, 10 minutitos son, eh, Grisel, en caso de que usted tenga alguna consulta, alguna pregunta, eh, tal vez no necesariamente. Que... Ajá. <risa> Nunca me había quedado. ¿En serio? No. Y usted estaba aquí, este, o sea, usted ya había estado con los módulos acá, con... con... Solo el módulo pasado fui compañera de, de ah, ellos. O sea, ah, de hecho, hay varias cosas que, que sí he aprendido, porque no le voy a decir que no. Ah, Pero de hecho, mi inglés está un poco más avanzado en teoría, uh -huh. porque ¿Sí? he perdido la práctica. Ah. Eh, de hecho, el módulo anterior que le comentaba, en el que sí llenábamos la parte de él, de la post, en las partes de, de ajá, los foros, ajá. era de intermedio. Ah, inglés intermedio. Entonces, ajá. intermedio uno era. ¿Y por qué la Entonces, pasaron este? <risa> realmente fue porque como para las inscripciones nos mandan un test sí. para ver en qué módulo nos van a agregar y realmente a veces por falta de tiempo solo lo hice en cinco minutos y no le presté atención ajá. a algunas cosas y igual. Ajá. De hecho, he estudiado en diferentes lugares inglés y he ajá. aprendido bastante a pesar de haber sido los mismos temas. Ajá, ajá. Uh -huh. Me imagino, este, de hecho sí, eh, como a manera de feedback, sí le puedo decir, eh, maneja un poco más de vocabulario, siento que se expresa mejor. Pues este es un básico 5, ¿no? Eh, y de hecho... Mmm, Esperaría más también de un básico 5. Uh, siendo tal vez honesto, siento que hay varias personas que están un poquito atrás con respecto a lo que tendríamos. Sí, yes, maybe, maybe, maybe because eh, only eh, speak Spanish, my partner. Sometimes. No, no tengo un esfuerzo uh -huh. de hablar. Ah, yes. But yeah. for example, I studied three years mm -hmm. in the CNU West. Ajá. Uh -huh. But, eh, maybe, son 20 módulos. Mm -hmm. Desde el módulo 5, never Spanish in the class. Mm -hmm. eh, is for, for definition, if you know, you don't know the meaning of the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And you said the definition in English. Uh -huh. the, descri describe the, the word. Never uh -huh. say exactly meaning that word. Entonces, siento que eso le, les hace falta. Uh -huh. Y a mí me hace falta también a veces. <ríe> I Entonces, know. Porque todavía lo hablo como entrecortado. Uh -huh. Pero es porque perdí la práctica. De hecho, después de esos tres años, pasé uh -huh. un año que no, no. Que no, no estoy inglés. Uh -huh. no, para uh -huh. nada. O sea, que retomó Entonces, el módulo este que hizo el anterior. Ah, no, eso es como. Otro lugar donde estoy estudiando. Ajá. Esos tres años los hice en la, en la nacional. Ajá. En el programa que tienen llamado CNUES. Yes. Uh -huh. Ajá. Ajá, Entonces, pero por eso. O sea, pasó ese año y después volvió a practicar el inglés hasta que entró a los cursos de ese foro. Sí. Ah, ok. Nice. Yes. Y yeah. únicamente tal vez lo único que no me ha quedado claro hasta ahorita Ajá. fue lo que vimos creo que en la segunda clase. Lo de las cláusulas. Ah, eso de what, what eso what realmente is... es la primera vez que lo veo yo de, de, de esa forma. Entonces, Ajá. ahí siendo un poquito confundida. Ya, yeah. va con lo de las what clauses. Y um, these are like what I was telling you in the class. This is not exactly a sentence, but a clause is just an idea that is part of a sentence. Y what clauses are usually subjects Like, for example, when we say what I need is 
to practice. What I need is to practice, right? So this is a what clause. We have a complete sentence, this, everything, but what I need is my what clause, right? I personally, uh -huh, exactly. And that's okay. why it's the subject, because if you think about it, it's exactly as you mentioned, lo que necesito is. So that's a, that becomes the subject of my complete sentence. Okay. I don't usually uh, teach this uh, the way it is in the book. In, well, they ask us to stick to the book and what is there in the contents there. But I don't personally like the way it is described there. To me, this is just like part of a regular sentence. It's just an expression. It's not something that we should see it as a clause per se, because even though it is, it, I guess it might confuse people. Now, if you ask me, this is just an expression. So what I need okay. is to practice. And I can repeat the same pattern, right? What she did is to promote her brand. What she did is to promote her brand, right? What she did. So I can accommodate this expression, the what plus something else to create like different ideas. Lo que yo necesito, okay. ella hizo, right? The idea basically is the same, right? All the time. I okay. can, however, combine this, like when I say, I know, what she said was right. I know what she said was right. Yeah. Lo que, yo, yo sé que lo que ella dijo está bien. Exactly. Uh -huh. okay. So you see, it's the same structure, right? So it's pretty much the same idea all the time. Now, mm, okay. Uh -huh, it's, there is like... Sí, maybe... Mm -hmm. Maybe I was confused because in the in the examples or uh -huh. the class, yeah. eh, this part, eh, a, o sea, aparecía después, o sea, en el final de la oración. Mm, Entonces, uh -huh. no estaba segura de cómo realmente se utilizaba. Ah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, but if we want to, I guess this is like the simplest way to say it, right? Uh, whenever these what clauses, uh, they function as the subject of the sentence, which is like the most common way in which you will listen to them or in which you might use them, right? Just being the subject of a sentence. So that's okay. pretty much it. Then the, the, the idea is the same all the time. Okay, it's more nice. clear for me. It's clearer, perfect. Thanks. All righty, so well, Let's see um, how it goes for you. I know that maybe this isn't like the more suitable level for you, but maybe at the end of the level, then you can take the test again or you can ask them for that test again so that they can take you to maybe a new <laughs> Because I would say um, you should. You should probably be in a more challenging level right for you i know this might this might be really easy for you i mean there's always an opportunity okay. to learn however okay. the, well I'm, I'm sure that you're going to you're going to feel yes this but when for me the best form for uh, learn english is um teach to mm -hmm. or corregir or enseñarle uh, a alguien más because oh, nice. you pass the new information for to her uh, and you uh, record remember sorry and uh, you remember <laughs> the information that maybe you forgot mm -hmm. exactly so it's like in, in, when you do that for, process for this reason for this reason uh i don't matter that never uh, i i guess okay i feel uh, that uh, forever i learn more mm -hmm. a little more mm -hmm. because I um so very different o sea, 
I had different, different profesores, I had different, no, I had different teachers. No todos enseñan igual. Exactly. Yeah, it's different okay. styles and different approaches. So there's always, right, something to learn. So nice. Okay, Grisel. Okay. So, well, uh, thank you very much, actually, for your time then, for staying there uh, these uh, extra minutes. And that's it, right? Just keep on practicing. And if, uh, well, sometimes you need some help or you need some advice, whatever, uh, for the classes, I'm here, right? So uh, okay, I'll thanks. give you a hand. All right, excellent. So okay. thank you very much. Have a good, Have a good night. night. And I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye.